I'm Rafael Ayesh. I'm a half French, half American documentary filmmaker currently based in Cairo. Hi, my name is Andrew. I'm 23 years old. You know, I'm running and walking around the world. I'm currently on day 405 of my journey. Kate, Andrew's sister, is my friend, and when she first told me about Andrew's adventure, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I sailed from the United States to Italy, and I've walked all the way from Italy to China, and you could say I've had a few adventures along the way. He actually took a sailboat from America heading to Holland that got hit by a whale in the middle of the Atlantic and they got saved by a cargo ship. Yeah, I've stopped telling that story because no one believes me. He slept in mosques. He's played the violin for naked men. I was attacked by a fox in Croatia. He's uh, slept on the road to the sound of coyotes. Passed out in a supermarket from dehydration. He saved baby lambs from being devoured by dogs. Played violin at a wedding in Kazakhstan. He's been greeted by mayors. He's had animals slaughtered in his honor. I've walked over 10,000 kilometers. And I'm still not even halfway there yet. Until he plans on sailing from Japan back to America. I was given a camera. I've made a few short, bad videos. But it's hard enough to walk 50, 60 kilometers a day and write a journal. Uh, let alone like making a film on top of that. It's really too much for me to do by myself. And also the camera I have is scratched and terrible. I don't know if this has become clear to you yet, but from a documentarian's perspective, this is a documentation emergency. In just a few months, his trip will be over. I think there's a story, a real story of determination, a story about passion, a story about trusting in life and meeting the other. He's surviving thanks to his violin skills and the generosity of others. And I think you have to agree that this is a pretty unique experience. And I think all of us could be touched by it. I started walking in Italy with Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, back to Kazakhstan, and now I'm in China. And I still have more countries to go. Andrew is now reaching the second part of his journey as he enters East Asia. I really want to be able to document him, find out what he's learned, what are the stories that he's encountered along his way, how does it feel to finally be heading home? I have a million great stories. I know it would be a really cool film. But not on the camera that I have now. <laughs> and not as me as with me as director. My films revolve around getting to know different cultures and humans from around the world and connecting with them. O sea, dale pues, diga, no, no pare, que es que necesitamos que llueva. Hace ya mucho tiempo que estoy triste. I've also co-founded and run an intercultural children's workshop where we take Egyptian children with no opportunities for travel on simulated travel experiences so that they too get to touch the magic that comes with discovering the world. So all my work is really about the magic that comes with meeting someone that's different and this is why I'm so passionate about this project. My approach to this documentary is going to be mostly observational. For me, observational doesn't mean just observing what's in front of you uh, and purely staying back. For me, observational is letting life unfold while the camera is on and not trying to hold on to certain ideas of what the film needs to look like or the story needs to go. I really want to let the story unfold in front of us as it's happening. At the same time, to me, observational also means recognizing my own presence as a filmmaker and the impact that that has, and also the special interaction between the filmmaker and the subject, which also takes place throughout the film. Let's face it, he's walking 50 kilometers a day. So me, as a photographer, film uh, director, and also sound engineer on set, a one-woman team, trying to keep up with his 50 kilometers a day pace is going to be quite a feat. So this whole idea of me trying to keep up with Andrew and the adventures that ensue 
uh, when we're together and also as I try to pursue him are probably going to be intricately woven into the film because they're part of the story that's going to be unfolding. it. So I want to be as true to this experience as possible. I want it to really be representative of what it's like to be on the road with Andrew. I feel like capturing this essence of adventure means partaking in the adventure. And this is the approach that I really want to have in this film. So the plan is to join Andrew on three stops. Once as he's crossing Mongolia, a second time crossing Korea and Japan, and also in the States as he finally walks home after over a year of crossing the earth by foot. The details of our budget are below. We cannot make this happen without you. And may I remind you, this is a documentation emergency. Really, think about it. He's walking across the world. Also, uh, it's really, really uh, lonely sometimes because I'm just walking by myself for over a year now, so it would be kind of nice to have some company, even if it is a Hollywood director or a non-Hollywood director. By supporting us, you're supporting connection, passion, determination, and life in its purest form. Let's make this happen. This is, we have a shoestring budget, as always, with all my adventures. It's almost no money, but uh, so give as much as you can, or as little as you want. Everything is accepted and help us uh, make, this, make this movie and share it with everyone. Share the fun of the, the good of the world. I really hope you'll help us and be part of this journey with us. Thank you. Love and gratitude. <laughs>